It is possible to fly without motors, but not without knowledge and skills. Good morning, one and all. I'm Jirin Thomas from second year MBA. I'm Meghna Raj from second year MBA. Reva Business School is established with a long-term vision to educate and empower the next generation managers and leaders to build sustainable businesses which will not only enable them in achieving operational excellence, but also explore new business models. Reva Business School aims at putting an effort in restructuring and redesigning the curriculum that would emphasize more on new teaching, which will provide a holistic education by integrating the knowledge received from various courses and specializations. It's my immense pleasure to welcome our Honorable Chancellor, Dr. P. Shamaraju. Welcome, sir. It's my honor to welcome our today's chief guest, Mr. Kanlur Sudhir Prabhu. Welcome, sir. I extend my welcome to all the faculty members and my fellow friends for today's event. In today's highly competitive job market, it's essential to have skills that are in high demand and sell well to potential employers. Whether you're just starting your career or looking to advance the next level, there are several skills that can make you stand out from the crowd. These skills often referred to as skills that sell, which can help individuals stand out in a competitive market increase their earning potential, and secure long-term career success. Before starting off, let's have a brief introduction about a chief guest. Mr. Kanlur Sudhir Prabhu is an all-rounder generalist and specialist in strategies, operation, problem solving, and team building. Programming and debugging is something that he's passionate about. He completed his BCom in the year 1987 from DAV PG College. He has completed CA in professional accountancy in the year 1990 and DISA information system auditor in year 2002 from Institute of Chartered Accountant of India. In July 1991, he worked as senior officer accounts as Associate Cement Companies Limited. In August 1994, he worked as factory accounts executive where he worked at at Kasna plant in Noida. He was also manager for factory accounts in General D, Confiteria, India Limited in the year 1995. In August 1996, he worked as manager for corporate accounts in BPL Mobiles. He was manager for finance in World Scope Disclosure India Private Limited in the year 1997. In October 2000, he became CEO and assistant vice president consulting at Asian Health Services Private Limited. He was also partner for SN Kollur and co-chartered accountants from October 2002 to October 2004. He was vice president for finance in ABB India Limited in the year 2011, where he worked for 17 years. Presently, Mr. Kanlur Sudhir Prabhu is a whole-time director of ABB Global Business Services and Contracting India Private Limited. He is head of Global Business Services in Bangalore and head of finance operations in North America. It's our pleasure and honor to have such an eminent personality in our campus today. Now I request Dean, Madam uh, Shubha A to come on the stage and speak a few words about Parichai Lecture Series. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, I would just take two minutes to just brief you about this Parichai lecture series of RBS. This is the first lecture that would start from today. Of course, you're all aware about DLS Distinguished Lecture Series, wherein we are bringing distinguished achievers from various fields who are coming and delivering lectures, and you're all benefited through it. When we talk about Parichai, Parichai means introducing. So not only introducing speakers over here, introducing you to a new world that is nothing but industry. Now something that we need to align with, we always talk about the gap between industry and academia and how to bridge this gap is something that always is discussed and deliberated. And always we come to a conclusion that although discussions and deliberations are done, but the gap still exists, the reason being 
somewhere we need to align ourselves by understanding the expectations of the industry. I think the speakers that we are going to bring in in this particular series will enable each one of you to understand what is expected in the industry domain today and how you should empower yourself through those skills that is required, exposure that is required. Most of you come to me, maybe a few students approach me quite often, discussing about we need exposure. I always give them one answer, exposure is not something that is available as a package. Exposure varies from individual to individual. Some people, even though they have opportunities, don't utilize those opportunities, then you don't get exposure. Opportunities are there and we have students who grab those opportunities so you get exposure. Now it is up to you how you grab these opportunities that comes your way, use the platforms that is given to you and gain exposure. So exposure is something that wherein we need to also look at it from a positive point of view and we have to learn from it. Now example I will tell you, today I brought in a new diary with me and I made it a point DLS, I make a note of all the lectures that is delivered in a particular book. And today we are starting with the first lecture and every person coming here has many things to share and many experiences. I was talking to Sir in my cabin for some time. And many things we exchange as information, inputs, and we learn through it. So if we keep our mobile phones aside for some time and we all pay attention and maintain a separate notebook or you make a pointers of it, go back, read once again, prepare, prepare more because you all have information that is available to you. So what you have to do is you have to learn, you have to go back, you have to improvise on that. This is what was told. What was this that sir was talking? This term I did not get, this concept I did not understand. I think that is how you will gain exposure not through curriculum alone. That is important, that is a basic framework. I think along with that, all of you should make a conscious effort of learning through these lecture series that is happening. I other day told you also, we have DLS, we have Parichai starting from today, and we will be coming with young leadership series also in days to come. I think this batch that is there will benefit from all these lectures that is happening. It is not, it is not you are missing two or three classes in the timetable and coming here. Some of you have that mindset. Oh, my this class, that class on the timetable, I had to miss to sit in the auditorium today for this lecture. Change your mindset. If you do not change your mindset, you will not be a better person. Grooming yourself is in your hands and how you do it is again left to you. I wish all of you enjoy the learning experiences that is given to you over here and you must benefit out of it. Thank you all. Now I request our Chancellor and Dean to felicitate our guest. Now I request our Chancellor to share a few words on the occasion. A very good morning.
from 2015 i am insisting and uh, forcing all our uh, directors deans reva is unique by 2025 whoever uh, pass out from here should be a job providers not job seekers that was the dream i have that is what we i proposed in to, to, uh, 2015 because of pandemic the deadline was 2025 because of pandemic looks like it is not happening so now again we i started by 2027 all this Students who are pursuing studies and passing out should be job providers. In that direction, when I go on uh, insisting that we should do that, otherwise, why? Uh, because example is me. I came from a small village, came to join as a clerk in Dana Bank for 300 rupees. I started my business. Now, directly or indirectly, I can proudly say, more than 2 lakh people are benefited through us. At least 10,000 to 15,000 people are employed. If that is the case, having you people study, uh, uh, as far as I am concerned, I am uneducated actually. I am learning now uh, when I became, uh, started educational institute. Every day I am learning. I explore and come, not that uh, simply I will come for uh, these things. That is how, but first we have to start from uh, yeah, MBA. That is why uh, she is the one always proactive and she explores and she works hard and she will see that that will happen. That is what, that is the reason why this, uh, when she proposed distinguished lecture series, I was really thrilled. Yes, that is, this is what I wanted. That is how it started. Now this Parichaya what he started also. Skills are important and the skills, how people will introduce uh, to you is important. As it, she rightly said, classroom is, the, is, is a text, uh, they always say, continuously I'm telling, beyond textbook, beyond classroom, what you learn is education. Textbook you can read, you can understand. Lord, whatever is there available in textbook, this is available in Google itself. Our lecturers are available. I am sure uh, all our lecturers are, they have that uh, concern. Even uh, whether they are at home or holidays, 100% they will guide you. You are capable and you are matured enough being a MBA students to understand what is there in the textbook. You have to prepare and come with only for uh, doubts what you have. You should get it clarified with your lecturers. That is how through assignments education should happen. Now the first uh, uh, what is a series, uh, first one today uh, by Sri Kanlur Sudhir Prabhu that is skills that sell is a very good topic. I hope you understood my expectation also I am expressing here. This batch particularly should not expect placements. You should become, you should become job providers. What is that you want from us for you to become the job providers? You should check out, you should come forward. Definitely we will support wherever we can. But you should have that hunger, urge, that is important. So you are the luckiest batch, I can say, continuously having this uh, DLS, now this Pariche, and they have got a lot of plans in the pipeline. It will happen. And uh, enjoy this. Explore yourself after going, uh, after this lecture series. And uh, evening, instead of sitting uh, in front of the tea, I know you will not be sitting because you are not just uh, small children. You have to, if I am not wrong, if you work hard in two years, you will, all of you will definitely will become entrepreneurs, I am sure. 
and i wish you all the best now uh, over to kanul sudhir babu please go ahead so like i feel at home i was telling uh, chancellor sir dean madam that uh, i lead a team of about 900 people on the floor where i work and uh, 80% of them belong to your age bracket either they have just come out of the college as graduates or they have done post graduation they belong to i will we have mbas we have chartered accountants we have uh, icwa cmas bcom as well so before we start uh you know like i had to keep in mind in terms of there are students from different faculties even if you are doing mba different streams you have chosen my aim is not today to make some of you happy at the end of the lecture oh i have chosen the right path and some of you feel guilty of having chosen what you have chosen that's not the intention today you are what you are you have chosen a path carefully in terms of lot of conscious decision would have gone in when you decided or when your parents decided to support or your relatives decided to support depending on the context the idea is as uh, chancellor sir said <coughs> if you have to become an entrepreneur i will take up from there you need to also be able to learn what does it mean to be an entrepreneur for that you need to Uh, immediately out of the college you need to take up the first job that you like start earning start earning experience earning money will happen automatically but as chancellor sir said you study in the class you should not restrict only to that you need to learn and gain experience right so where does this whole cycle start so so i have to show here yeah so first let me set some preamble when we take up mba i mean i am generalizing it or any other professional course our first aim is to get the best job with the best package yes or no i don't think any one of you who have come here investing in mba to do outright charity charity is possible when you have income when you have your money right so just setting a preamble who all are hiring be it a student from reva university be it your contemporaries from your graduation from wherever you have done your basic graduation your classmates would have gone into some other university so who are hiring and what is common amongst them if you see i have just taken from india skills report 2023 the latest there are different industries hiring at different points in time but the common goal common target is talent we no longer hire people we no longer hire graduates or post graduates you are simply not hired because you have done mba from reva university that's the harsh reality of life we hire you because you have an mba from reva university and you bring some skills to the table as a fresher when you go for the first interview there is hardly anything if i am the interviewer there is hardly anything i can ask you on your experience right you all agree the first time when you appear for an interview be it campus placement or be it anywhere else there is hardly any question that can be asked ha huh, tell me about your experience you can only tell about your personal experience right so what does it mean so my focus today is purely students who are going to graduate soon as a mba and would be looking forward to applying for i will call it as competing for the best job that is available that you dream what does it take what skills you need to develop 
so as to make yourself. When we say skills that sell as the topic of the day, it is not something we are selling. Because we have those skills, we are recognized as a potential employee and then we get the best deal out of it. Okay? Now, when I say, when a corporate, be it ABB or be it any company, there was a time when people used to hire based on qualification, maybe my generation. You're done BCom, come we hire you. You're done MCom, come we hire you. And if there are 20 BCom sitting in front and one of them is an MBA or postgraduate MCom, we hire you. We give you preference. That was like a, a lot of decades back. So what is it that is looking, you know, people are looking forward to? For every job, there will be a prescribed skill set. And the candidates will be actually measured against it. There are companies, without you knowing, they, you know, they will not call it as a psychometric test, but they will give you test to check your language competency, check your logical reasoning competency, check your compatibility. They can even predict the behavior pattern. And you'll be surprised. Just by asking the right questions without innocently you will be ticking, like as a game, you know, talking, you will just fill the, you know, just like the new type, A, B, C, D, choose one amongst them. But that will tell you a lot. That will tell a lot about you to the company. So it is quite important. I'm just setting the preamble before I go to, I have skills to, you know, the skills that sell have only two slides, focusing on the topic. But unless you get the context with which I'm coming from, right? Now I'll just ask one question. This generation, it will be foolish on my part to ask who is not on Instagram, who is not on WhatsApp, or who is not on Facebook. So I'm not going to ask those questions. Wait, I'll ask, how many of you have heard about ChatGPT? <coughs> wow, I was expecting this. How many of you have tried ChatGPT? Next question. How many of you have Google, you know, chat, you know, the ChatGPT you have asked, skills that sell? Three people. I see three people. I knew. It was a tough task on my part in the modern era where people are so close to internet, close, so, you know, like uh, all the social media, chat, GPT, et cetera. Because everybody practically raised your hand for chat, GPT, right? So what else can I bring new into the game? I bring lessons learned over the years. So when I was introduced by one of your colleague, some of you may be wondering, oh, this guy has changed his job every year. That was the first reasoning, right? I was not lucky to be born in an era of internet. I was not lucky to be born in an era when jobs were available in the cities. So I took up my first job two and a half thousand kilometers away. My parents were in the south. I took up my first job in Himachal at the age of 22. I was there with the company for three years. I changed the job, but I have some lessons what happened during that particular period. Because of my three years job, I was so confident, ah, CA who? Three years experience. So I went in for an interview because I wanted to go to a city. Year was 1994. I need to share this experience with you. Company was Hindustan Lever Limited. Currently, it is known as Unilever, Hindustan Lever Limited. So with confidence, I get in. First question that, uh, that was asked, the interviewer was of my age as of today. And I was like, you can imagine, 20, 26, 25, 26. First question, my dear boy, name any five products of Hindustan Lever that you may be using. I was staring at him. There was no internet, there was no Google, there was no WhatsApp, there was no chat GPT those days. His next response was, my dear son, prepare and come next time. Okay, good luck. Next candidate, please. That was my experience as three-year experienced chartered accountant. Year was 1994. Exactly, you move one decade later, 2004. I was in practice, as you heard, SN Kolur and Company, I was a partner in Bangalore. One of my client in Yashwantpur, no names, wanted 
a young chartered accountant to join them. So we had many CVs, like youngsters like you who would give CVs. We referred one of the brightest guy. Academic record was fantastic. First attempt CA pass and all. Not a rank holder because CA is very difficult to get a rank all India. The minute he went for the interview, we were, we were sure the client will absorb him. First question that was asked of him, can you please explain me how the central sales tax works? This guy was blinking now. His, his turn to blink. A decade ago, I was blinking, chartered accountant, and this time it was his turn <laughs> to blink. He was also sent home. I got my mouth full. We trusted your judgment, and you are sending this candidate who doesn't even know the CEO of CST. OK? Now, exactly move one decade later. I will set the principle why. Exactly move one decade later, 2014. I am in ABB for 10 years at that particular point in time. And we had a batch of contract employees. You know, the company used to take fresh graduates as trainees, but not on the direct roles of the company. So we take, it, take them as contract employees, and then we confirm them into ABB. The ABB badge, it's not simply available. You need to prove your worth and earn the badge. That was our motto. There were four or five people who are working with us for four years in the company. Work-wise, fantastic. So they were picked to you know, give them the ABB badge. But HR said, human resources said, they need to undergo a screening. Three out of four could not name the company that was employing them. OK? And one of them could not even name what business ABB is into. Four years they have been working with the company. You see? So what I'm trying to get at is things have not changed. Exactly you come. It's not at one decade yet, but 2023 is almost a decade from 2014. I rejected a candidate proposal day before yesterday. Again, no qualification. I will not give the qualification because it's recent. Two and a half years experience, zero SAP experience, zero ERP experience. Somehow, because of the bright academics and the interview was fantastic, was chosen. Salary demanded by that person was three times. What? You are demanding higher package, higher expectation in the industry just because you have a fantastic degree and you have bright academics and zero skills relevant for me. I don't mind giving you a job, training you on the job, but come at normal market terms. Don't ask for three times the salary just because you, are <clears throat> yeah, you have the qualification. So why I brought this decade-long story, it is important for you guys to see. I will show you the next slide. Again, India skills report. This is a generalized India view. Today, if we have 200, 300, 400 people here, it is 380,000 students all over India. This is a published report, India skills report 2023. Employability of Indian students coming out of colleges and universities has touched 50%. Why? Root causes. Absence of requisite skill set. This is not a new phenomena. You heard, I flunked the first interview because I didn't have presence of mind. I couldn't speak. A decade later, what happened, I told you. A decade later, what happened, I told you. And day before yesterday, what happened, I told you. We, why did I remove the coat? Because I am a commoner like you. I may be holding a post today, but once upon a time, I was like you. I just wanted to be talking to you just the way I talk to my, you know, my employees. I treat them also like I give the same talk to my new batch which comes in, in terms of. So what does this mean? I have another interesting slide. So we have gender diversity. <clears throat> I'm not going to say how many more men are here or how many more boys and girls. No. I see broadly well spread out. The result doesn't change. The girls fare too much more than the boys. But we are still, 50% is the employability of Indian graduates, postgraduates, whichever qualification it is. I have a slide on qualification also. OK? So no qualification is better. 
You know why? Basically, it is us as human beings. Whether I do B Tech, whether I took, uh, you know, like whether I do MBA, whether I do BCom, whether I do, you know, whichever it is. There is a huge list, but I brought four or five which is relevant. Practically, you know, generalizing the relevance from the students here. So why do you think, again and again, I've kept the same message? Absence of requisite skill set. And Chancellor, sir, gave a fantastic message. I'm not sure how many of you picked up. He said, education is not just studying in the, you know, looking at the books and attending the lectures, writing down the notes and uh, by hurting it and uh, writing in the exam to get the good grade. That is part of gaining the knowledge. Your generation should be like the sponge. Your generation is the luckiest generation compared to the past generations. Why? You have access to technology. Chat GPT. I know for sure when so many of you raised your hand that you know Chat GPT, and only two or three raised their hands, they actually asked Chat GPT skills that sell. You know, there were a lot of other things would have been asked just out of fun. But the knowledge and the technology is in your hands. You need to make use of it to enlighten yourself on topics that are a bridge between what is taught in the college. If the lecturer or a professor is teaching you a topic, you need to be picking up what is not getting taught because they are also human beings. They can teach X amount only, limited amount in the limited periods that you attend, that you are great, uh, gratefully willing to go and attend the class. Rest is in your hands. Professional courses are always. So what is it that, uh, you know, like uh, one important slide before I get into the real skills that you need to do. What is the aim? Now I have written something that is my view. 31 in years in the industry, that is my view. But I want to know, how many of you want a job for money? Or how many of you want a job for a career? Let me ask, let us take a vote. Job for money? Raise your hands. Good. Job for career? Right? I'll tell you the difference between the two. Job for money is like planting a flower plant and expecting flowers next day or three days, one day, right? Planning a career is like planting a coconut tree. I'm giving a live example from my native. You take 10 years of effort and then the coconut tree will give coconuts lifelong. You don't need to take care of it beyond 10 years. Career, you need to be going behind a successful, satisfying career. Money comes with it. Money comes with time. Money comes when it is due. In terms of you deliver, the company pays you. You deliver, you have the skills, company will promote you. But if you go behind money, you'll be running behind money. You will never be satisfied with your career. There are people who run behind money and are not happy with what they are doing. Have you seen three idiots? All of you, those of you who have not seen three idiots, raise your hands. The movie, Amir Khan's movie. You, you should see three idiots movie. Right? In the sense that the, the photographer who is passionate about wildlife photography, he makes a name for himself. Engineer, Fung Suk Wangdu. Right? He makes a, how he is enjoying. What I'm trying to say is, Try to learn from experiences all around you. But wh why do I put the two buckets? You, your behavior, your attitude, and your ability. Knowledge. Knowledge is what you gain in, as Chancellor said, said in college, in university, and also what you try to learn on your own. Then there is something called aptitude, right? Something which you are like natural. Supposing if, if, if natural aptitude is not towards science, I will not like to go into science just because my neighbor is becoming an engineer and this side neighbor is becoming a doctor, I will not be doing. But it is very important thing for a modern generation because moder modern generation focuses only on good paying job without requisite competency. And how do you get competency? As Dean Madam said, exposure, the competency, the skill, 
is not available in Reliance Fresh or more or Amazon. You cannot order two kilo competency, please. You cannot. Your attitude and behavior and you know ability. There is a reason why I said ability. Sometimes I want to climb Mount Everest. For me, it is too late. It's beyond my ability today. People go for that uh, Mount Kailash, uh, uh, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It is beyond my capacity today. I need to realize and I will not go behind it. But taking a walk in Kaban Park, it's in my hands. For my health, I can go and do it. So similarly, skill, you need to decide. Each one of you has a different capacity, different capability, and different ability. But what I am uh, sure is, your attitude towards work, your attitude towards learning, your attitude towards mujhe kuch karna hai, I need to do something, I am passionate about, about this. That is exactly what is going to make you, you know, like identify, learn new skills, that put into practice, as Madam said, get exposure, improve your competency, automatically the best job will be yours. And if you are in a job, the best promotion will be yours because private industry is not like a government industry. It's not like government where every five years, because you have heated the seat for five years without bothering about what work you have done, somebody will promote you. That's only in government. And even now, the government is changing. Non-performers, how many of you have seen in the newspapers, non-performers are like thrown out by the central government, by the state governments, etc. That is happening. But since your target is private industry, because if you want a long-term career, private industry is the best, because talent is recognized, and you have a satisfying career, OK? Now, that, with that preamble, I come to the main topic of today. In my opinion, given the fact all of you are students trying to complete MBA from Reva University, thinking that your first aim is to get a job, a good job, good career. And once you get a job, you don't want to do the same thing till you retire, so you need promotions. So my focus, this topic can be wide in one hour, in 40, 45 minutes. I thought I will focus on what is relevant for most of you here, that uh, you need a job. What do I, as a potential employer, when I say I, I am here in front of you, but I have a big team which does the hiring. What do we, as potential employers, look for if you happen to come into our company for an interview? I'm giving you relative term, OK? So with that, three important areas. Again, I'm emphasizing subject matter expertise that you have to bring from outside. Only in the Indian Army, in the Indian Air Force, in the Indian Navy, you come with a as a full-bodied, able adult. Then they will train you. Remember my words. Only in the Indian Army, in the Indian Navy, and the Indian Air Force, or a police force, they hire you because you are a full-bodied male or female. Then they will train you. But there also, if you want officer's post and other post, you need to fall in line like anybody else. You want to be a fighting soldier, you have to be only like maintain your health, go and stand in the queue, you meet the height, weight, build criteria, you are hired, job is secure, government job, pension, lifelong, unless you go and fight in the border and get a bullet. But I'm not undermining that. But even people go for a motivational career there in that as well. I have to share one more experience. When I was expecting my CA results, I appeared, I was so like charged because I was in Dehradun, two years of article ship. I appeared for Indian Air Force ground duty officers course. That was in the year 1990. My first group CA exam I've given, the result came on the day we were taken to Mysore. There is a selection process. And I went in, I flunked the physical. I flunked the physical. Rest all candidates were like in the, there is an obstacle course which they need to do. In three minutes, some people had done three times, some people had done two times. One guy broke his bone. He fell. He was immediately in front of me. The guy who was in front of me, he broke his bone. Then I didn't, I didn't even complete two parts of the obstacle course. 
I am saying ability. So aim for something which you can achieve and once you aim, you need to go full hog. There is nothing called my aim today is this and tomorrow I see my, uh, my classmate, oh she is aiming other side, okay I will start aiming that side. Two days later the boy on this side is aiming this side. That way you will never achieve your goal, okay. Now subject matter expertise, attitude and behavior, these and the specific skills. I am here to talk about the, the, the middle and the last part. The faculty, the you know, curriculum and your own zeal and the hunger for knowledge will make you a subject matter expert. I am here to just talk about, I have one slide on specific skills, one slide on uh, attitude and behavior. Okay? Now, this is the slide on uh, what we look forward to people who come for the first job. I will share the slides, okay? Listen to the real life experience. That is what is going to, the Hindustan lever, you know, the uh, thing that I gave you, where does it fit in? Communication, creativity and critical thinking. There is a specific reason why I have made the communication bold. I am from Kannada medium school, okay? Up to 10th standard, I was in Kannada medium. 9th and 10th, I was put in English medium, but it was taught in Kannada medium. That's okay. I was an introvert in PU and uh, uh, till I went into Dehradun, DAV college. There everybody was uh, walking around like a dada. So then I became, okay, I can also be a dada. That is when I overcame my introvert uh, behavior. I was shy. I was always sitting in the first bench in the class. I was the first one looking at the back, back bench boys. Why are you creating trouble for the madam? Why are you creating trouble? I was like that, you know. People were saying all names for me. That's okay. But communication, irrespective of whether you are from English medium, Kannada medium, Hindi medium, whichever medium you have come from, unless you are able to communicate crisp, your creative thinking, your any other skill is not going to get you anywhere. Now, I don't mean you will start joining a you know, special class for communication. No. Peers, help each other. You are able to take a challenge. If you want to communicate one topic and make your, the, your classmate or teacher understand it, try to do it in four bullet points. Take that as a challenge. Not today. What I'm trying to say is anytime you want to communicate to your parents, your brothers and sisters, take that as a challenge. That is how you challenge yourself to bring out that communication out of it. I am not here to tell you communications means popcorn, jaisa pata 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 English baat karna hai. No. Whichever language you want to speak, you should be able to communicate what is there in your mind, what your experiences are. Critical thinking is of no use in the team if you are just saying something which nobody is understanding. It's the most important ingredient. It is just like the cherry on the cake, icing on the cake, fantastic cake, icing is horrible, it's of no use. So I had very, uh, you know, lot of introspection, which one will I highlight and flag to you guys? Now when you get into a job interview, you heard me, there is hardly any question possible on your experience. So you will be given a case study, in MBA you do case study? You do, right? So what is the most important thing there? Your ability to do critical thinking, break the problem into smaller problems, attack the root cause, and not just attack every sentence in that, pay attention, you will discover that the whole uh, aspect is just rooted on perhaps one root cause and you plug it. Now, only practice makes you perfect. So companies will quiz you are you logical in thinking? Are you critical in thinking? Out of the box thinking. Now I have added one more sentence. There is something called inside the box thinking. Okay, I am boxed and uh, like I am biased. There is something called outside the box thinking. You need to find a box, jump out of it and start thinking. But I am saying think as though there is no box. Let your imagination flow. Interview time, you the way you look into the eyes and the way you communicate, grasp the problem, ability to, you don't know, you don't know, don't give bullshit answers. The ability to communicate, that's one part. Adaptability, you have gone in, 
There is an interview. You stay just behind Reva College. There is a company opposite to Reva you know, University. You have just decided, oh, kitna acha hai, idhar rehta hu. I, I live here. If I get a job here, life ban gaya. But then the only the other thing is set up a family or something that I will not get into, career-wise. You go for an interview. Imagine myself and uh, Raghavendra sir, we interview you. Said, you get the job. You're so happy. We, say, we tell you, the posting for you is in electronic city. I bet my money, half of you will say no to that job. Okay? But you need to be adaptable. To get the first job, the job of your liking, in the company of your liking, you need to be prepared. I am giving my real life example. First three years, ACC, I was in remote areas, factories. None of you youngsters will go and stay there today. No TV, no uh, fridge, uh, electricity comes and goes. No STD, those, I mean, uh, no STD those days, no mobile phone those days, nothing, right? No cinema hall, no mall. I decided to come to a city. So I, I, I applied for uh, uh, Asian Paints, Bombay corporate office. Three years of CA experience in ACC. They picked me like this. I came by train to Bombay for a walk-in interview. They picked me immediately. They said, three years of experience, we were looking for freshers, but you are coming in like with three years experience, just come. I joined today. I start my induction today at 8 o'clock. Tomorrow morning, that means one day later, I am called into the, the managers, the HR managers thing. See, here is your transfer order. After 17 days of induction in Bombay, Bombay they clear. Bombay enjoy Kalia. Go to Noida, Kasna, cement plant. I'm sorry, that the paints plant. I was adaptable. I adapted. I moved to Kasna. See, my parents are in South. First job was in Himachal. Two years they transferred me to Madhya Pradesh. I was there for one year, cement plant, ACC. City life, Beku, city life I want. So I came to Bombay and I was like transferred to Kasna. So what I am trying to share with you, if I am here in this position today, it is not because I have like sat in a position, five years later I got promoted. The same you need to expect. You need to put in hard work. And they said, uh, programming and debugging is my passion. Yes, as an accountant, non-technical, I am a programmer. Because in 1985, when I was in my first year BCom, I picked up programming. I joined. I picked up programming. Those days, computer programming was coming in, in uh, India. So my father funded 500 rupees for the course, and I learned programming. What did it help? It helped my brain to logically think, to logically break down a problem, how to execute. I write visual basic macros today. My job doesn't want that. But I write macros to help my team when they are bothered with some kind of a big problem, I say, okay, you take care of it, I will write you a code. There are two big set of codes which I have written, 2017 when India introduced GST, which is still running in the company, and 2018 when the business was disputing accounting entries to, you know, <laughs> related to the GST, I have written my life's biggest macro, 6,536 lines. That is still running. What I'm trying to say to you is, once you get a job and money, don't stop. Skilling, continuous learning is a must. As uh, Dr. Uh, said, your Chancellor Sir said, he's also learning every day. And the same thing is with me. I keep Google and now chat GPT with me. Google, fantastic in terms of uh, knowledge base that is available. We work on SAP. Uh, when I get into a meeting with technical team, I actually do homework and go. As uh, Dr. Sab said, he does homework and comes in the, in the sense, you know, even if he has to address or even if all the faculty, they will be doing a lot of studies. Keep learning, right? There are some skills which you need to demonstrate and develop when you are in college. Leadership skills. Now, everybody wants to be a leader, political leader. I don't mean that. When there is a problem, as you as a student, uh, you know, have to, uh, I will call it as a tackle, if there is a project, one of you have to take a leadership on one aspect and, you know, like, you start developing those skills. Leader means stepping on somebody's head and then becoming a leader. No. You need to, 
you will be assessed. I mean, of course, there will be, you know, like in the REVA uh, curriculum or uh, during the selection process, there would have been some group discussion, etc. So similarly, some companies, when we hire freshers, we do put you across just to see how you gel well with others, whether are you a team player or not, that will be assessed. Okay? Now, with that in mind, I go to the next one. This is the most important one. This is what you are known with. Everything you need to be a hyper positive, uh, I will call it as a, uh, not a half glass empty approach, but a half glass, uh, uh, you know, like uh, full approach. Okay? You need to be lot of uh, uh, capable of doing self introspection as dean madam said gap analysis every one of you is doing the same course but not at the same intellectual level pardon me for saying this if you have made it to reva university you are above average i don't doubt you're not here just because you paid some money as a fees and anybody sundry would have been admitted no i trust reva admission policy that means but you are not at the same level. Some of you are at an intellectually higher level than the others. Now, if you yourself look at the others and say, okay, utna karne se chalega, why do I go extra? You are the loser. The express train, the passenger train, the goods train run on the same tracks. Right? But the express train stops only at its goal. The passenger train Will you, will, will you be surprised if I tell you, it also stops at its goal. Express train's goal is to reach you fastest to the last destination. Passenger train's goal is to ensure that every passenger is getting a chance to get off and get on at every station. The goods, it doesn't take passengers. Its goal is to just ensure that the goods are reaching the destination. So each one of us, my dear friends, Having different destiny, it's in your hands which path you choose. Each one of you can determine the pace at which you learn. And prepare yourself for a long career ahead of you. If I say I have put in 31 years in the industry, ignoring the faculty, just the student population, the age of any one of you, is less than my total number of years of experience, 31. That means you have a long career ahead of you. 30 years later, you will be standing in some podium like this and sharing your experience, saying that 31 years ago, I was in the university. Right? Note down the lessons of your life. Note down the lessons of your life. There was my first general manager when I took up my role in ACC. There was an instance, they want, because I was a bachelor, they wanted to give me a bachelor's accommodation. I fought for it. I said, I'm a vegetarian. I don't smoke. I don't drink. Uh, I can't be sharing my accommodation with anybody. The HR said, no, you're a bachelor, 22. You'll get only sharing accommodation. So I threatened. 2,500 kilometers, if I can come for a job, I can also go back. Then general manager called me. That's the only time normally general manager will not... Uh, entertain the junior most employee because I have to go through the hierarchy. He called. He, he was of my age at that time, whatever age I am in now. He said, Prabhu, there are problem kya hai? Then I explained, this is my problem. He simply picked up the phone, told the HR, what is his entitlement per his grade in the company? HR said, independent accommodation. Abhi hai kya? Char hai. Usko ek de do. Phone rakh diya. That was the message to the HR. But next important message was for me, and I still quote him with pride. He said, Prabhu, there are career, I will tell in English, he told me in Hindi, your career is just the starting. This is not the way to start the career by fighting. Okay? Your problem is solved. In your life, in your career, you will meet hundreds of people. Everybody will have good quality, everybody will have bad qualities. Ignore the bad. You don't creep about the bad. Don't focus on the bad. Pick up one or two good qualities from each person you meet or you work with. Mr. Kaku, P.K. Kaku, 
a Sindhi gentleman. I saluted him that day. If I am what I am today, it's because when I meet, when I work with people, I work with youngsters. I have staff who are closer to retirement. I have, I have staff who have retired, but I have hired them back on a contract because of their skill set. Not everybody who retires comes back to ABB. But we have hired back people because companies are rehiring. Companies are hiring even retired people for the purely for the competency that they bring in. Okay? And last, this is my parting message to you guys. I didn't want this to be a question answer session because uh, you know, nobody should feel guilty. Nobody should feel, I want each one of you to introspect where you are in terms of gauge yourself, your behavior. Are you a positive attitude person? Are you a negative attitude person? I want each one of you to set goals, be it your career goals, be it your professional goals. Make the most of it. Try to aim for the sky as they say in English, but remember, the more higher you aim, if, the, if you fall, you need to be resilient enough to sustain the failure. 2004, 2002 to 2004, I was a partner in SN Kullur and Company. Do you know, guys, why? In 2002, recession was there. Some of you were maybe, uh, I will call it as uh, young kids. The company I used to work for closed. I give you lecture on adaptability. So I wanted to give a real life example. I started appearing for interviews. I got one interview in Hyderabad, one interview in Pune. My father by the time had retired. He says, Naukri milega, you go. Your mother and father, no, like myself, we are going to stay here. I said, no. My aim is to stay with you. And the only alternative is I will get into practice. My father said, go ahead. That is how I got into practice. I had zero bank balance. Another lesson in life. I never bothered about saving till that particular point in time. Because of whatever commitments, not splurging money, because salaries were not high those days. That was the important lesson in life. That when you start, when I say don't go behind money, aim for a career, whatever job you get, enrich your skill set and competencies so that you can aim for the next better job, but start saving money as well for your future. It is not just about, skill set is not just to sell and make money and you know get a bike and then go on a hike no that is an important lesson which normally uh, you know no school or college will teach you i'm just saying sharing from my experience okay from that angle there is wealth of information available it is okay to quiz chat gpt on some tricky questions but use chat gpt free available service to enrich your knowledge you have to identify skills. Neither Dean Madam, nor uh, uh, Dr. Shetty, nor your uh, Chancellor will ever tell you, you have to pick up these, 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 these skills. They will not. They will offer you a bouquet. You need to pick the skills, what is the right skill for you. In terms of, I am talking now about your curriculum. I have done MBA now in marketing, but what do I do? I have done this in finance, what do I do next? I am talking about those skills. But the previous ones, which I have showed you, each one of you is your own destiny writer. Nobody else will write the destiny for you. It's you, you alone, who can determine your future and your, uh, what the company will hire you for, right? The last one, practice makes one perfect. How many of you have seen Keanu, that, uh, this guy, Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise, there was a WhatsApp video that was going on, how he practiced for a bike uh, which uh, actually goes over the hills and lands and then he uh, gets into a parachute. How many of you have seen that particular thing? What is uh, Tom Cruise's age? Can you please say it louder? At 62, Tom Cruise, who is already a multi-millionaire, is doing that stunt, full day practice, multi -day, multiple times practice to perfect the shot. I want each one of you to have that in you. You aim for a skill, practice. Skill can be converted into competency by practice. Satisfying career is always guaranteed for you. Last, uh, when I say this, I want to leave one more message. Youngsters, the day you join the job, they will not talk about uh, what do I get to learn, how much to learn. First question I am asked, what is the career prospect in this company? 
when will i get my next promotion Where, what is the next grade for me what does it mean to get the next grade please don't get into that mode irrespective of the company you are going to uh, you know join or as uh, dr sub said uh, you know some of you potentially employers in the future you will resonate with what i am trying to tell you when you want to hire employees you will have to look for these traits so it is not just important for you to have these skills from you as an employee but also as an em potential employer in the future okay so with that i think uh, it's time right so 3 minutes over thank you for patiently listening to me and uh, you know like uh, you are all i'm not here to do marketing on behalf of my company okay so i will not say anything i mean we do post openings and all but i'm here to share my life's experience because i just consider you as you know i have uh, uh, my own son of the same age as you guys i mean almost like 2 years maybe elder to you guys but then nieces and my like i have lot of cousins so i visualize you as my extended family in my office 900 people out of which about 80% are of your profile your age bracket so stay blessed i wish you all the best give me a promise give yourself a promise not me a promise that starting today you will start doing an introspection in terms of in addition to the curriculum what else you are going to aim for what else you lack or where you need to sharpen your skills so that you stand out if there are 20 candidates the candidate from reva university should stand out otherwise what is the distinguishing factor that the employer will look into with that i end my talk today okay i hope even if 50% of you will start introspecting i have achieved my goal i mean i am not having high expectation that all 100% should introspect but even if 50% of you or 40% of you start introspection and that helps you in your career it made my day thank you thank you madam thank you yeah yeah i have time That was indeed a very informative session, sir. Thank you. Now the session is open for Q and A. A small guidance for the audience: please introduce yourself before asking the question, and also keep your questions crisp and clear. So, uh, my question to you, sir. Raise your hand so I can spot you. Sir, here. Ha huh, sorry sorry <laughs> so because because there was no question from here she is asking me a question <laughs> no, so my me. question to you sir so what are the few common mistakes that people uh, do when they're trying to display their skills and how we can avoid those mistakes yeah. first and foremost uh, the biggest and the common mistake people do is inability to say i don't know see i am not a racist i am not a Uh, when i say indian i am also an indian but one of the weaknesses we as indians we have is we feel ashamed to say no we feel ashamed to say i don't know we seem to be expert in everything and anything we will even guide the government to how to run etc so if the question is asked interviewer when a question is asked that is with the purpose they will be looking into your eyes to see how is the question are you comfortable with the surprise question googly or are you like uh, you know some people will start bluffing from that point onwards that is the biggest mistake that they do common element second why do i say that even if you know the topic half or say little i mean we are generalist also right you should up up front you should say i know only very little of this and based on what i know here is the answer if you say there won't be a second googly coming your way but the minute because see it's all experienced people taking interviews the minute you say something like um, in hindi we say no rail gadi like you know pat bina patri ka rail gadi interviewer will spot it will ask the next googly and then you are stumped then you will feel guilty so to avoid so uh, at the outset you should say either i don't know the subject sorry sir and uh, uh, if you uh, i will call it as uh, uh, no little start with that my first job in mumbai a fergusons was on exactly on similar lines i didn't have anybody giving me this lecture when i went as a chartered accountant a fergusons and company at that time they were representing kpmg in india those days 
there was a first round I cleared, the HR process I cleared, and then I was put on to a chartered accountant, senior manager. I'm from a village, like I'm from a small town, like Davangere, like CA from a very small firm. Clients are like all partnerships, etc. So my first question that was asked to me, can you name 43B disallowance? Section 43 disallowance under Indian Income Tax Act. I could say only two things. Because in that small firm, I've handled only two things. But it is like coming from a village, the highest, tallest building I have seen is two stories. Jo saukar ka hota hai. But if you come to Mumbai, it is like uh, 35 stories, etc. Right? The story was like that. The minute I said two, she said, are you sure? Only two. Then I said, coming from my background, I am memorizing and I apply these two. Immediately, she threw the book at me, income tax ready reckoner. She threw the book at me across the table and said, can you find section 43B for me? Three seconds, I could find the section 43B. She said, you are hired. Get my point? I was candid enough not to bluff, but I was candid enough. I had the presence of mind through the book. I opened in three seconds because I know the section, but I've never used the rest of the sections, right? So please don't make a mistake of bluffing. Be honest, be truthful, and don't be afraid. It will be appreciated because nobody expects a, a fresher to know everything in the world. Honesty is what we look forward to. Sir, I have one more question. So, here. Yes, please. So, ah, here. begin. <laughs> no, but, but you hold, I think. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, let, let me just toggle. So. Because I, she got up, so I was looking at her. Yeah, sorry. Oh, very good morning, sir. Myself, Diksha Bharadwaj from First MBA. So, we as today's youth, uh, we lack in accepting the failure. So, your suggestion about it? Yeah. No, in fact, uh, uh, it's a good point. I will say that because I see that. Uh, Multiple times I've seen that in my own son at home, same age bracket. Failure is something which is uh, the stepping stone for success in the future. Our generation, I am now becoming one of you, okay? Our generation, I will not single out saying that your generation, have a seat. Our generation has been, I will call it as uh, a pampered generation because parents never said no to us. Parents never denied anything to us on an average, with whatever limits. So we have always scored, uh, I will call it as a, I've been a topper in my school. But when I come to an MBA course, I'm just using the analogy, different bright students from different colleges have come. So now you are competing amongst the best. In Hindi, there is a saying, or in English, if I convert, one-eyed man is a king amongst the blind. So in the village school or in the town school, I was the brightest. But when I come into the city, Reva University, and hobnobbing with others, I see others succeed and I'm failing. Don't take it as a, uh, you know, like a failure as a, uh, 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 something that very difficult to die. You need to start learning to accept the failures. But don't stop there. You need to introspect. What caused the failure? You will hit the root cause. And you will, Eureka moment will be there. Next time, you will not fail. But there is nothing, no magic pill that will vanish the failures in life. If you are planning well in advance, plan for failure point as well. That is the second message I want to give. Most often when we start on a project, we only focus on the end goal. Like for example, uh, you know, Bangalore airport, huh, I have hand luggage. I will uh, you know, reach in two hours. Airport says three hours, but I will reach in two hours. I will go. But you're not planned for traffic jam on airport flyover because Mukhyamantri is coming this side or that side. You miss the flight. That's a failure, right? Your planning failed. So there is no one magic pill. Accept it. Be ready to pay the differential fare and the take the next flight. Because your goal is not to catch that flight. Your goal is to meet the destination. You need to be ready to pay the price of failure because of your lack of planning, which caused the failure. Sometimes it is out of your hands. Accept it and go forward. Companies do accept it. You have messed up. You are in my team. Some payment has gone to a wrong party. We had to pay the dean, madam, but it has gone to Raghavendra, sir. It's a failure of the system. Now, you don't need to feel guilty, but you need to introspect and see what happened in this process, why dean, madam, was not paid, but Raghavendra, sir, was paid. right? Learning next time will prevent failure. Yes, please. Now it's your turn. I have one last question no, from. One the last audience. question from. 
की वजह सर अकॉर्डिंग टू यू वॉट आर सम स्किल्स दैट विल बी यूनिवर्सली वैल्यूबल अक्रॉस इंडस्ट्रीज एंड प्रोफेशंस रेसिलियंस पेशेंस एंड ऑनेस्टी इरेस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द इंडस्ट्री रेसिलियंस विल मेक यू गेट अप एंड रन आफ्टर एवरी फेल्योर बिकॉज फेल्योर इज गारंटीड वन डे ऑर द अदर ऑनेस्टी विल एंश्योर दैट यू आर ट्रस्टेड by your superiors your peers your subordinates only when you have the support of all success if you are not honest nobody will trust you you will never have team work people will scheme for your failure have you heard some of the elections some candidate will lose just because uh, his own team members or his own party members have schemed against him so be honest and uh, the success is yours uh, good morning sir yeah last question uh, my name is gandhi studying second year mba so my question is sir uh, as a fresher we have offers from company which is a good brand and we get a companies from startups where we get a good designation in good brands salaries will be less but uh, designation won't be there and the other place we have the designation and sal which one we have to choose sir okay this is the dilemma all the generations will always face i recommend take up the job that you like where you have learning potential company ka brand hone se aapka brand value badhta nahi hai the bigger company you join lesser is the learning opportunity in my opinion first 3 years of your career should be used to learn like a sponge in a startup will not staff too many people startup you will have lot of learning opportunity but only risk there is startup as it is called can shut down at any point in time because of lack of funding but you need to be re resilient enough you need to be adaptable and jump on to the next startup but i would recommend people who have taken up a job in a startup yeah. not because of the designation ah huh? sorry i didn't say because of the designation if the learning opportunity is there in the branded company go and join the branded company if the learning opportunity is there in the startup go and join a startup company or if you have the talent and some backing some funds as uh, chancellor sir said start a startup yourself and find a funder for it okay but don't go for the company's brand because the company's brand is not going to take you uh, just because you are sailing in a company called abb uh, it doesn't guarantee you a successful career unless you bring the skills to the table and you have demonstrate the competencies going forward okay thank you We're done so good morning yes my please. myself vinay raj from first mba uh, my specialization is finance what are the basic skill sets you expect from an mba student to get placed in your company see any qualification we, we have hired even engineers in a non finance role but in a finance team customer credit management we have hired engineer plus mba who is not a, a finance student right what we look forward to is analytical skills you should be good in the like uh, spreadsheets if anybody who talks of finance should be good in spreadsheets and will should be in a position to be good with numbers because a simple problem given if you fumble that shows that you are not good in numbers right so nobody will quiz you what was chapter number 3 in subject so and so in second semester sometimes people have failed to even answer oh what all subjects you had in second you know like overall what subjects you have studied people have studied they know only the last semester they will not remember uh, the first and the second <laughs> right so short answer to your question analytical skills ability to navigate through uh, you know like uh, i will call it as uh, excel and uh, the spreadsheets which are must have for a finance guy Okay thank you sir thank you thank you thank you sir for being so patient in answering all our questions as we have come to end of today's session on behalf of my school i express my gratitude for today's event first i would like to thank our chancellor dr p shamaraju sir for creating this kind of forum thank you sir then i would like to thank our speaker mr kanlur sudhir prabhu for delivering such a awakening and enlightened talk thank you sir
I extend my thanks to all the faculty members for their never-ending support. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all my fellow friends who were being so attentive and enthusiastic all throughout the session. Thank you all. Only one uh, parting words to all the faculty, Guru Bhyav Namaha, and to all the students, bless you guys. <laughs>